Where do you think you're going to land before you take it? Where do you think you're going to land? I, I mean, definitely slightly more right, slightly more like conservative, but also probably liberal in, in terms of like values, like libertarian values, probably, but uh, conservative in terms of like economic stuff. I'm going to say libertarian right somewhere. I think we're all going to have the same answer here. I think same. I'm going to end up in the bottom right. If economic globalization is inevitable it should primarily serve humanity rather than the interests of transnational corporations okay. already i have no idea what the fuck this question is asking basically they're asking if measures to you know unite the world is one giant economy uh-huh. so like for each country to kind of lose their individuality and just do business among each other it should primarily serve humanity rather than the interest of the companies themselves that are doing the global risk globalization i mean that hold on like a good idea but why is there no neutral button why is there no like neither agree nor disagree button i have to, agree, to disagree. Have to agree more or agree less or disagree more or disagree less otherwise you end up flat in the fucking middle you, you, you don't get any fence sitting <sighs> options here Frost. you got you got to yeah. take a side man you got to pick a side i'm gonna fence it in a meta way but i don't think the test will reward me for that what do you i'm mean? gonna hit disagree because it says you should primarily serve you it should primarily serve humanity rather than the interests of transnational corporations and i'm saying it shouldn't primarily serve anyone it shouldn't prime like it shouldn't have a primary service to anyone to a certain extent a lot uh, uh, the entity of a corporation acts the same as an entity of an individual like from a from a legal standpoint and also it's like a lot of people might like see this as like a, oh corporations taking over why would it serve the interest it's like if it's free market and the corporations result in like a totally different outcome in, in the world and people have a better quality of life as a result i don't see any problem with that i'm i'm gonna i'm gonna fence it like really hard probably in this video see this, I this is where I, I i have something to say and i think it really all depends on one thing it depends on who's running the corporation the way you can tell who the companies will be run by is it, i guess you just gotta make a prediction you gotta use your own intuition like what do you think the what do you think the kind of people would be that would run the corporations well, I mean, in, the question is uh, asking in a global like, economy okay okay but the question itself is just asking what the original intent should be so in i uh, I think in the intent you want it to serve humanity right you want it to serve people people are people right and corporations are made of those people if it doesn't serve the interests of the corporations then different people will find different ways to create corporations in in different legal loopholes or whatever and they'll create their own conglomerates that are able to reap the benefits of whatever system that they're a part of the idea of people banding together in like huge groups of people like that to create very very low cost goods or services for a lot of people that feels more inevitable honestly than like a economic globalization which also kind of feels inevitable but uh, i'm going with agree you're going with disagree michael your final thoughts i think i'm gonna go with strongly agree question number two i would always support my country whether it was right or wrong strongly disagree strongly disagree i, I, think, I think we could all I, I think we could all agree to strongly disagree at this point and this, this is a very interesting question just because it's like i wonder who does strongly agree with this no one chooses their country at birth so it's foolish to be proud of it that i disagree that see that that makes no sense to me because yes you don't get to choose where you're born and you don't choose where you grow up in but you can still choose to be happy that you were born in it you were born you ended up there it's part of who you are it builds yeah. a large part of your personality as a child like the people you grow up around the situation in which you're brought up in gonna... and your parents who are a huge part of your life arguably they, they are you you are the part of your mother that broke off of her they are you to a certain extent they're just an extended part of you did choose to live there so yeah i i i disagree i think i think proud might not be the right word but it's like yeah no one chooses their country at birth yeah so it's foolish to be proud of your country i disagree question number four our race has many superior qualities compared with other races <laughs> I mean, if, uh, <laughs> if we're wow. talking about oh, if we're talking about the 24 hours of Le Mans, that's a great race, way better than all these NASCAR races. <laughs> so that yeah. is a superior race, yeah. actually. Yeah, that is like... a superior race. Hey, your Fortune 500 kind of got it, though. Let's be honest. Oh, okay. 24 hours of Le Mans or the Isle of Man. You see how like crazy oh, okay, they okay, go on okay, Isle okay, of Man. Okay, but but Kentucky Derby though. That's not even a race. <laughs> I don't even fucking know. It is a race. It's a horse race. <laughs> All right, Michael, you got the this enemy one. Question of number my five. enemy is my friend. Oh boy, this one's deep. 
I, I okay. It's, it's hard to gauge. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know, if you asked me when I was 16, I would say agree or strongly agree, but I'm a changed man. I'm an old man now. You're like 21 or something. You're not that old. I know, but I've, I've seen a lot of like stoic TikToks and I'm like, they're right. <laughs> they're right. We're really I, on the dwarfing shit. I have no enemy. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I have to disagree. I think I'm a regular disagree because theoretically, yeah. If they're against someone that I'm against seeking out their aid to deal with the party in which we were we are against is a good idea, but it doesn't necessarily mean that they have my best interests in mind either. I think there might be a difference between ally and friend because I don't think you could just make an enemy of your enemy your friend. You can be allies with someone, but I don't think you can. I don't think this test is going to go that deep into it. All right, I, I, think, enough, hey, I, I, I mean, I disagree with the, mean... qu with the question. I'm just saying yeah. like, a more nuanced, more explorative take, but all right. Military action that defies international law is sometimes justified. I can agree. Keep in mind these questions are meant to be vague i think i agree a little more than i disagree see see this this is where i must make uh something now and i think it's basically like just because you won't do something in a war or in in, in any confrontation doesn't mean that the other guy's going to be playing by the same rules like if you want to solve things diplomatically but the other guy's willing to like give up his life just to like fuck around with you because he hates you that much then you're just being a fool and so when it, when it comes to stuff like this i i never really can give like a fully vague answer because it really depends on what the situation is and who you're dealing with right in in general terms i think you want to have all options on the table and then depending on what the other side does that's when you start going more towards peace or more towards war yeah yeah, yeah i'm gonna just go with agree i'm gonna just i'm a, I'm a bandwagon on you guys for this one <laughs> There is now a worrying fusion of information and entertainment. I mean, to be fair, that's been I true agree. for the history of everything. I, I think I'm a. I think I'm a disagree. Cause I don't worry about it. I, to me, entertainment like information like education is at its best when it's entertaining this to me feels like feels like a question asking like if it were to provide an example it would be like okay is it worrying that education is shifting less in you know this this compartmentalized you go to school you do the boring thing at school you come home you have fun at home versus like education on youtube where it's kind of both at once that kind of thing i'm not worried about the the fusion of the two here's the thing i don't think that that's what it's referring to from my perspective the first thing that came to mind when i was looking at this question was like they made cleopatra black in a series that is labeled as a historical documentary mm. oh that's what you think it's referring to yeah because information and entertainment it doesn't say what type of information like think about it this way we've got the ai president mm. shorts that are kind of hilarious but they're going around and you know they say some wild stuff in those so it's oh, like man information is so vague of a word it could be anything literally like all like the things are forms of information <laughs> entertainment already is fusible information to a certain extent you could yeah, describe no, this, it this question that. makes no sense if you really think about it the, but, that, but I, th I think that's to, the problem with this test in general it's so fucking vague that the answers like w no matter what you answer you're just it, it doesn't fully it regardless fully... let's try to understand the essence of what they're actually asking like they're probably talking about they're probably thinking of something like relevant I mean, you know if you read the thing up at the top that says before taking the test note it isn't a survey and those these aren't questions they're propositions question the logic of individual ones that irritate you is to miss the point some propositions are extreme and some are moderate that's how we can show you whether you lean towards extremism or moderation on the compass your responses should not be overthought some of them are intentionally vague their purpose is to trigger reactions in the mind measure measuring feelings and prejudices rather than detailed opinions on policy they're trying yeah. to get that innate response from you yeah my original thought was disagree so i'll go with that disagree I'm gonna strongly agree people oh, are yeah. ultimately divided more by class than by nationality i agree yeah i strongly agree on this one that's why a lot of countries look at americans and they're like you fucking discussing americans because we live relatively well even among the lower class compared to some countries yeah 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 for sure controlling inflation is more important than controlling unemployment i agree i will oh. agree as well i think doesn't one lead to the other not necessarily because with more unemployment that means that jobs are harder to come by meaning that the people who have jobs are holding on to their jobs gotcha. the price of goods are going to go down because they're going to be more frugal with their spending when the economy is booming it's usually also that same effect 
except the wealth is being more distributed. Gotcha. So things go up a little bit more expensive, but because everyone's making so much money, it doesn't really matter. The problem with inflation is when no one's making enough money to keep up with the price of goods. Because corporations cannot be trusted to voluntarily protect the environment, they require regulation. To an extent, I agree. I, think it really I assume this question is more like uh, the Teddy Roosevelt argument. Well, when, when it comes to answering this question, we have to realize that corporations don't care long term. And so it's really based on the, uh, the incentive structure of everything, right? If we incentivize long-term planning in, in, in terms of the market, I think things would be different. From each according to his ability to each according to his need is a fundamentally good idea. Yeah. Strongly disagree. That's a common. Strongly disagree. It, it sounds good when you read it out loud, but if you don't know what it's referring to, if you understand the essence of what they're saying here, like what the quote is from, it's like shared Minecraft chests where it's like, okay, we're all going to pool our resources in here. We're all going to put our diamonds in here. Oh, you go man. back here after putting in like three diamonds, they're all gone. There's no resources left for you anymore. That's human nature. Okay, it's like but a, to be fair, okay, here, here, here's where my question comes into this. Human nature will never allow this to actually come to fruition. You'll never get a group of people, no matter how selective it is, to be that selfless because everyone's always going to be in it for himself. Totalitarian governments, if they have enough police power, power, military power, they can basically force communism. The freer the market, the freer the people. I agree. I'm going to strongly agree. Yeah, strongly agree on that. It's a sad reflection on our society that something as basic as drinking water is now a bottle, bottled branded consumer product. I'm I saying, slightly I, agree. I, I, I would agree with this. But I I think I would I would just like to say that we're the ones who allowed it to happen in the first place. Yeah. It's not I'm like drinking. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we were told that tap water is fine and then we didn't believe it and then we were like, oh no, we need bottled water. We need purified water and it's like, no. I mean, to Our be fair, ancestors drank from streams for like, I don't know. To be fair, they put all types of chemicals in the water nowadays. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm agree. Even though we brought this on ourselves, it's a sad reflection. I'm gonna agree. Yeah. Land should not be a commodity to be bought and sold. Now, I strongly is, disagree. I'm gonna strongly disagree as well. I think this really ties on to like what you believe is your right. It is regrettable that many personal fortunes are made by people who simply manipulate money and contribute nothing to their society. I want to get um, your take on this. This is a hard one because on one hand, I do get the importance of like business owners, CEOs, CFOs. I do get their importance to a company and what they do. But on the other hand, I don't think that the importance they have to the company should entitle them to making like Google fucking bucks. over 50% of the company's <laughs> income in their pocket while their workers are making you know fucking minimum wage like i don't think the ceo of fucking mcdonald's really does much at this point i don't think you can fuck this up that type of ceo that's sitting there doing nothing in his office all day except conference calls and jerking himself off behind the desk i don't think that they should be making billions of dollars protectionism is sometimes necessary in trade strongly agree the fuck does that mean what I have protectionism an idea. it's the it's basically and i'll give you the book definition mm -hmm. the practice of shielding your country's domestic industries from foreign competition by taxing imports oh okay, so basically okay. make things more expensive to get from overseas basically what trump was doing okay. where he put tariffs on stuff and because he was like we need to rebuild our own industries here in the u.s because we kind of exported I mean, everything the, the only thing is it really depends on whether you want to be a globalist society and like live as a world instead of a, as a country, right? Yeah. The only social responsibility of a company should be to deliver a profit to its shareholders. I think we could all disagree on this one. I think I so. I think I agree. Why so? Companies are not responsible for social change. In fact, it's probably best for shareholders' interests that companies don't get involved with politics. I don't think Netflix has any social responsibility outside of delivering a profit to its shareholders. Well, no. Now, don't they have a responsibility to, to, the, that, to the customer? to give them a good product yeah but if people are watching garbage and they're going to continue watching garbage then that's on those people who continue to pay for the subscription to watch garbage yeah that's i i was originally going to disagree but when i think about it more nuanced it's like how do you determine if a company is providing a good like if they're doing right by their people or not because if they're like netflix for example they're making all this like garbage shit okay well who's to decide if it's garbage if the people are paying for it and if they're enjoying it and liking it and it goes too nuanced and it's like if you're giving people what they want then you're making money you're making your shareholders happy so 
in a roundabout way, you're fulfilling the the obligation of doing right by your customers by doing right by your shareholders. And at the same time, yeah. there is an element of like, okay, deception and whatever. But yeah, I, I, I'm not going to strongly agree. I care a lot more about personal responsibility. Like if people yeah. want to, people should hold the companies accountable for not having their Look, interest. If you don't like a product, kind of don't buy the product. If you don't like the service, yeah. don't buy the service at the end of the day. That's yeah, why because would, guess that's what? Why that's going to change agree. those shareholders' minds. If the shareholders want a change to go through and they don't see a drop in profits after the change, they don't care. If they do see a drop in profits after the change, best believe they're either A, going to walk it back or B, try to forget about it and keep moving on. That's why so many companies, when they get called out on stuff, they ignore it. The rich are too highly taxed. I agree. I genuinely have no idea. Just because I, I have no idea either. Those with the ability to pay should have access to higher standards of medical care. Oh, this is an interesting question. I agree. I agree. If you have more wealth to pay people, I'm not going to disparage those people for doing something for you that they wouldn't do for someone else. And this is it's common like, sense. Fundamentally, it's common yeah. sense because if you have more resources to throw at a problem, the more likelihood that you're going to solve the problem. At one point or another, I think there has to be a baseline though. That, that I will say. Like there has to be like a starting point rather than just zero. I don't know yeah. what that is, but there should be. Are you trying to say that we should have, you know, public health care? I think, and this is going to be a very hot take. Are we to say we're having free health care, Wilson? I'm not saying that we should have free health care. I'm just saying that we should have the ability to at least go to the doctor and get checked if there's ever an issue in an efficient manner that isn't cost effective to either you, the, the person who's like having the injury, or to whoever's paying for it, right? And I, I again, I don't come up with solutions. I just look at the issue and I'm just like, this is kind of messed up because I don't think we should have universal healthcare because I don't think that works. But on the other hand, I also don't think like the way that everything's commercialized or everything has a price to it to the point where like people can set their own prices. Like companies set their own prices for everything and it's basically like stock trading between themselves. Like I think that's fucking shitty as well. So uh, there has to be a, like a third option. And, and I hate the way that there's always only been two. This is another thing that I particularly hate with any issue. There's only like two ways to go about it. There's never more nuance to it. Governments should penalize businesses that misled the public. I strongly agree. agree. Yeah, you can't mislead your consumer base on a large scale or on a, even on a micro scale. I don't like that shit. That's why I don't like doing um, agency work during for insurance because you mislead people. You tell them, yeah, this is the best price we can get you with this vendor, despite the fact that you're probably bumping it up a bit to get that commission. Laissez-faire to a point. Yeah, I'm actually going to disagree with this one. Because you think Again, that the consumer should punish the business? Yeah, I think it's the personal responsibility thing. I think I think in general, see a lot of these questions, this is like honestly like a, a fantasy land kind of test. Because mm -hmm. all these questions are like, should this, should that? And it's like, these things are not practical. A lot of these things are not practical. They're not going to happen. And there, it's not human nature where it's like land shouldn't be a commodity or be bought and sold. It's like no one can decide that. But in practice, even without any laws in general, in a world of anarchy, a person can still own land if that's as far as their sword extends. Or it's like uh, the only social responsibility of a company to, or actually not even that one. It was um, all these questions are like they should have to, they should have access to you higher know, you know what standards of medical care. My immediate <laughs> reaction is very like, yeah, this makes sense. Like, the, like it's a very liberal way of thinking immediately. But then the more I think about it, the more I realize like, no, fucking shit. No, that, that, that makes no fucking sense. They're phrased in like a in like a compassionate way, which is like those with the ability to pay should have access to higher standards of medical care. And you're like, everyone should have access to higher standards of medical care. OK, is that even possible? Is that even feasible? The vast majority of money in medicine and in hospitals is spent on keeping people who are like 92 years old alive for like another year or two. That's where giant chunks of money are spent. From a utilitarian perspective, which is a lot of times the argument for in favor of like the moral like paragon that people try to portray the medical and like hospitals as, it doesn't necessarily work when it comes to these things. People get too emotional about it. It's not practical to 
to load up millions and millions of dollars for anyone who feels entitled to whatever kind of medical thing that they want you know it's it's literally just not even possible so it's like governments should penalize businesses that that mislead the public and i'm like this is one of those slippery slopes for me to me it's like if i'm going based off this like fantasy land thing that this that i'm just going hypothetically off of here because i it's not i don't feel like it's even my place to tell anyone what they should or should not be doing i just want to observe the world and figure out what it's doing and try to figure out why and understand observe it you know that's yeah. what i feel like my place is but if i'm if i'm taking this route if i'm indulging literally the same girls that were lecturing me on like caring about the environment were like let's go shopping and they were going out buying like 170 dollar bottles of cologne or perfume from like sephora and i'm like what the fuck are you doing <laughs> so it's like I, I see the way that people act and i'm like yeah the consumers themselves i feel like should be a bit more skeptical yeah conscious and skeptical of like the the kind of businesses that they interact with they should be more aware of um dunbar's number and like more more empathetic to the people close to them in proximity more about like the allegiance to their family and their friends and their neighbors and all that sort of thing rather than worrying about like trying to interact with the whole rest of the world as if like the little extra bits of convenience to your life that comes with buying products from three three trillion dollar companies will somehow make your life better it might make your life more convenient but it won't make your life better and people should understand that if we're going off the should game like oh those people should be like this the government should be like this i feel like that would solve the problem of the to a certain extent it would solve the majority of the problem in my eyes of government of, of companies misleading the public yeah yeah, because companies that do that should be punished. Do you want to leave it solely to the government's hands or do you want to leave it into the hands of the people? And I hate to say it, but modern day people don't care enough. Yeah, and that's not, the worst part. Yeah, they don't it's... care enough to speak up or speak out or do anything about it other than yeah. file a lawsuit. And only so many people are going to get involved in that that actually purchase from the brand. So they're never really going to see any large repercussions like the Kia Hyundai fiasco. I don't know if I've told you guys about that, but vehicle theft is currently up 890% off of that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. That where people could just steal Kias and Hyundais just straight up easy. The new ones. Yeah. Easy. Oh. Yeah. Wait, wait, all wait, wait, the way up I, until I have 2021. not heard about this. What the fuck has happened? It's good. It's all So electronic. basically think about it this way. Uh -huh. Kia and Hyundai since 2011 to 2021 mm -hmm. have been making cars with without immobilizers. Immobilizers are a basic anti-theft protection that stops the car from being cranked without a key in the ignition. This can be dodged in the case of push to start, though it can still be cloned and your car can get stolen that way. It requires a little more effort. With this, people could just break into Kias and hotwire them. It's basically jailbreaking the car. Yeah, you can just jailbreak a car. And if you can jailbreak a car, best believe the corporations can control it too. Yeah. But um, uh, yeah. The more I think about this, the more I realize like my thoughts vary wildly depending on if I have time to think. Yeah. <laughs> like, it, wait we should we should not be we should not i i went way too deep into this one no I, no, no, no. Spending this is way good too long this, is, like... this, is, this is good again a genuine free market requires restrictions on the ability of predator multinationals to create monopolies Strongly so disagree. contrary to literally what i just said <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna agree because it, even in a free market in like a complete 100 percent laissez-faire free market there's no protection for the elderly there's no protection for babies there's no protection for people who are completely unable, unable to work things like that and there's a lot of holes in in missing prosperity in people's lives there was this recent video of like tristan tate on tiktok that i saw where Actually, no, I'm not even about to go that deep. No, no, but no, go for it. Go for it. Go deep. Go he was on, like, bro. He was like, there's two doors. One is heaven. One is hell. Right. A person gets offered to walk through the door and just like look through about them. Look like he walks in hell. And there's people who are starving and they're all malnourished and they have food everywhere, but their spoons are like six feet long. So they can't actually use them to feed themselves. And so they're unable to eat the food. And then he goes into the room of heaven and he's like, it's the same exact room with the same exact fucking mechanics, same food, same spoon spoons but everyone's well fed and then he sees that everyone's feeding each other and and it's like if, again if we're playing the should game i don't think it's even practical for a for a complete like free totally free market with no restrictions to even exist yeah because people no one's going to be responsible people aren't going to hold themselves responsible for when the world goes to shit yeah yeah and that. even in the free market even the people who benefit from that freedom still mm -hmm. care about their family they care about their children they want their children and their grandchildren to also grow up at then everyone has conflicting interests even in their own head i want this much money but i want this thing 
but it's like, I feel like in general, if people, if people have the option to, they will just, they will want what's best for the people around them as well. I know I'm contradicting myself right now. I know I am, but that just, what the fuck I do. I mean, it's not impossible to have two. I am kind of going into this question with like the understanding of like the citizens should vote for the leadership that then dismantles those predatory monopolies. So it is up to the citizens and that kind of thing. But yeah, I am, I'm, I'm fucking. Okay, I'm human being. I'm going to contradict myself. I'm going to agree. Yeah. My immediate reaction was strongly disagree just because I think at one point or another, it's all a cycle. You have an oppressive thing and then you create something new to break free out of it. But then that new thing becomes oppressive in and of itself. And then you just have this entire cycle of like the same thing over and over again. See, that's the problem with monopolies though. Let's say I create a monopoly on, I don't know, fucking radios, right? We still need radios despite the fact that no one listens to like public radio and we still need them for other stuff right so i own every sector of radio production in the u.s and all of a sudden there's no restriction i can do as i please someone wants to challenge my reign on this market okay cool undercut them temporarily so that no one buys their shit because i'm making so much money off the broad range that i'm capturing versus their limited range and then even within their limited range people will see mine that are 19.99 and theirs that are 50 dollars and buy mine not to mention my brand recognition, my expansion. People are going to know that brand. They're going to buy that brand. That's going to be a problem for the guy trying to get up and uproot me until he eventually A, goes out of business or B, sells to me. At which point I take over his production, expand my monopoly even further. And, and this is what I was saying, where it's like the more I think about it, the more I realize just like how against it i am and that's why i'm just like going with my initial reaction which was strongly disagree i understand like go for it and now a look at some of your personal social values all right here comes the a word hey oh, oh boy <laughs> wait a second these that <laughs> says social oh, values yeah. are different from what you think should be legal or it not. also goes into your um political compass yeah but it's like there's, it's there's, there's social and economic to it but it's like it's it's not asking if you think abortion is moral or immoral it's asking is it's asking asking if, if you think it should be legal or not if i know someone who gets an abortion like i could never be friends with them i'm never gonna like talk to them again but i still don't think it should be illegal it's like they're two different things yeah they're combined in one question but this one is legality when ab abortion when the woman's life is not threatened should always be illegal that is the statement what do we feel about the statement Shit, i gotta disagree i believe abortion is wrong like okay. morally I think it's one of the more clear-cut moral wrongs that there are. But still, I don't think everything that's wrong should be illegal. I think there are things in my mind that I literally cannot justify that I feel should fall more within street justice rather than legal justice. I don't think people should be legally punished for doing something like this. I think their social setting, their families, their community, whatever, should ostracize them and that kind of thing, should punish them socially for these kinds of actions rather than the legal system stepping into this kind of thing because in my mind when i have the when i play devil's advocate with myself when i have the moral debate back and forth is abortion right or wrong and i go like what about this what about this and i eventually every time i've tried to take it at a different angle it always boils down to the very stem of the argument which is actually a, you don't have to say a argument of of religion of a religious argument but it's an argument of core personal beliefs like what do you as a person believe is right or wrong that no one can take away from you that you cannot prove to other people you cannot instill in other people and no one can change in you it's just your own life and your own personal experience that leads you to have these moral axioms these like the core of where all your morality stems from and this seems to be one of those things to me mm -hmm. and so it's like this is somewhat of a religious thing because i'm sure religious ideas will stem from it and i don't think government Religion should does be play into it because yeah, that, and I, mean, I don't, your political compass is going to determine how you think that society should be ran governmentally yeah. and economically as well as socially so like like certain christian this, Christian conservative. This feels to me like too much of a social and philosophical and cultural discussion that's had among groups of people and communities and cultures. And it's part of like the character arc of like whole societies and humanity and individuals. And even though I believe it's wrong, I mean, there's no story without any conflict in the beginning. There's, there's room in the world for wrong things to exist and be challenged. And 
yeah, and I don't think the government. Look at it, yeah. There's a there's a lot of wrong things that like everyone can agree on, or I mean, you can't rule out some people, but like you know, almost everyone in the world can agree like, wait, murder should be illegal and things like that. But there's some things that I feel that are wrong, even close to as wrong as murder, that I feel are just disconnected from what the government should be meddling with with people that they're not involved with personally. But that's just me. That's just me. I but I could never if someone I knew personally got an abortion, I don't think I could ever trust him again or anything. How do I say this? I think certain things are wrong, but I it's not for me. But when when it when it comes to like whether it should be legal or not, I think that's a discussion more on the community itself. Because for me personally, it's a bad thing. I would I would say that it's illegal. For the whole of society, I think it's up to those living within that section. I think that it should be look I think that the US courts have it right. Mm -hmm. state by state basis and because hey if you don't agree with the way people here think for the majority where they think that it is wrong and immoral and bad for society right you could just live in a different state you can go live in a different state That's go to simple. somewhere where people agree with you go to somewhere you are welcome do not force yourself to stay somewhere that you don't jive with the general population. It's part of why I don't understand why so many Californians are moving to Texas. They vote Democrat. They think Democrat. They ruin their cities over there in California. They let these places fall into fucking oblivion, basically. Yeah, it's a great system to have states' rights where it's like, and anyone can go to any state. If I have a Georgia license, I can drive in any state in the United States and things like that. It's a great system. All authority should be questioned. I I agree strongly agree on this one i'm gonna I'm just strongly agree out of i think this one's not that much for me in my head this one's pretty simple honestly let's be honest an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth isn't this the same as that like revenge question from earlier yeah no, the no. enemies one or something or no no this is not the same as that but it, it's the same oh, it, 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 it kind of is it's involved with the stoic philosophy that leads people to be like okay i'm gonna be strict on myself but lenient with others so i'm a i'm gonna disagree with this one too because i'm growing up to well, be no, a actually, fucking wizard the opposite of that hold on hold on because an eye for an eye a tooth for a tooth if i do something to you that is bad you retain the right to do that back to me if you do something wrong to me i retain the right to do it back to you so that's kind of the opposite of what he was saying where it's more oh i'm i'm lenient with other people but not on myself but this kind of feels like um i think this is asking when people talk about an eye for an eye right i've never heard a tooth for a tooth i think i might have heard that once or something maybe but an yeah, eye for an eye i think people are generally generally speaking about like a person as an individual not like what they think the rest of society should do but like a person as an individual do they consider it moral for themselves to get revenge when something is done wrong to you i believe it's a basic human instinct it is it is absolutely that's why i'm not putting strongly disagree but because of the fucking TikToks, man. It's because of the TikToks. And you know what? In practice, I'm probably being hypocritical because I, I probably would do, like, take justice for these kinds of things. If someone betrays me, I'll, I probably would make the punishment fit the crime and take it into my own hands. Right. But it feels that when I think that way, I'm being immature and I still have room to grow. It feels like one day I'm going to look back on myself and be like, man, what a fucking idiot I was for thinking that. You go eye for an eye, everyone's just blind at the end of the day, right? It's just mutually assured destruction. Taxpayers should not be expected to prop up any theaters or museums that cannot survive on a commercial basis. Strongly agree. Yeah, I love theaters and museums, and I don't want to see them go away, but I'm also strongly agree. I think when these things become subsidized by government, they stop necessarily caring about, they stop trying, and it turns it into shit, and, and a lot of times they don't market it, they don't introduce all this great art to the world, because <clears throat> they know they're going to get paid through the government. So I'm also strongly agree. Schools should, I strongly agree. Schools should not make classroom attendance compulsory i strongly agree with this i yeah. knew this i knew this girl she was in my spanish class her name was alexis kaufman yo don't dox people on here the fuck? she showed up to like a fourth of all the classes and she got straight a's like like she would study on her own time and like do it all like flawlessly and then she would get in trouble for not showing up to class and like if she can do it if she can do the material without needing to show up to class then she deserves to have the right to have her time spent on other things that are more important to her. Yeah. Also, haven't you noticed something? 
the amount of people actually going on and skipping grades to get done with school sooner has gone down over time. If And that's because school yeah, realized yeah. that, hey, sure, it's great to have a student every once in a while that we can boast about and be like, oh, yeah, give us extra funding because we produced this awesome student. It's great for them to have that, but it's not so great for them to be losing numbers in attendance because then they get paid less money to pay their staff. I'm treating school like a precursor to the to the free market, you know? My teachers will all give me so much shit for not showing my work in math. I'm like, if I can do it mentally, I deserve to do it mentally. Exactly. And it's all part of the fucking no child left behind stuff they introduced. Nah, that bullshit. was the death of public school systems. Next all people one. have their rights. But it is better for all of us that different people should keep to their own kind. The, the f- who the fuck came up with this question? Wait. I'm not even going to entertain thinking about this one nuancedly. I'm just going to go with what I think they're trying to say. I think this is another one of those questions that they're going for like, oh, are you an extremist or a moderate? <laughs> I'm going to yeah, strongly disagree. Like- I think this is an- an- another one of those questions that they're using to test people like that. I'm going to strongly disagree. I'm going to regularly disagree. Not strongly. And the reason I say that is because in some some situations it most certainly is better for people to keep to their own kind huh. all, all of this fucking stuff about you know how people are going into like these muslim countries and they're like trying to spread like i, I guess the more lgbtq sexual- yeah, agenda yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like no, fuck off. Leave them to their own like ideology. They their don't own agree with traditions. you. Yeah, don't like, live there. It's just that simple. If you don't agree with it, don't live there. Go there. Yeah. Why it's... are you trying to change other people's opinions about what you do in a different country? If they don't agree with it, they're not going to agree with it. It's for their own religious reasons. And the is Nuit it... is authoritarian, and you think you're more of a colonizer than you think because these are the same people who will call white people colonizers. It's like, the same people who will like live and let live. Colonizer. You don't let live, <laughs> fucking idiot. Whatever happened to like those people who don't want that thing that you want are looking at you the same way that you look at oppressors. Yeah, exactly. No. This is this is where I, I I kind of like actually it makes sense to me in, in in this terms. It's just like yeah, okay, I can see that. Yeah, the vast majority of instances where I see this kind of thing, it's not even people going on. It's just fourteen year old white girls on Twitter who are like, oh, this country should be like this. I'm like, dude, you don't even you've never even seen that place with your own eyes. I agree. Fuck it. Right. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> we'll send good parents sometimes Me? have to thank oh their children fucking guy bro <sighs> this i feel like they're testing americans because in no, other places test versions depending on well, where you live yeah really yeah it's on the left i think i would do stuff like stick a fork in the fucking plug or <laughs> put my hand on the stove and burn my hand and doing those things taught me hey it's a dumb idea to fucking do that let's not do that again right <laughs> but for the more niche and social aspects of how to interact with people and stuff and not be a piece of shit because a lot of kids don't know right from wrong a lot of kids will tell to you like it is even when you know you know how sometimes silence is really all a person needs someone to listen yeah kids will always say something of like you know trial and error my parents you know I, I got spanked as a kid and i think it made me a better person for it like you doing stupid shit in public as a kid there's no consequences for it when you're like in your formative years nobody's gonna stop you from doing anything it really is up to your parents to have a to be the hand in your life as well as the heart in your life that guides you to understand how to be social like how to socialize with other people properly like there's literally a quote there's an indian quote i don't know how to say it in hindi but it's like only a loving parent will give their child the bitter medicine and it's like a metaphor of like nobody else is going to do this shit for you nobody else is going to teach you how to act in the world it's up to your parents to condition you exactly and that's a principle that i think is forgotten on a lot of modern day parenting a lot of parents nowadays just don't care as much as they used to. And then their kids grow up being raised by social media rather than their parents. Banking is a form of IRL moderation. It's IRL <laughs> moderation. That, that's a banger statement. I like it. <laughs> Nobody else is going to do it. Nobody else is going to spank your kids for you. And I think spanking is also, you can look at it as somewhat metaphorically here like i don't look at it as necessarily about spanking it could be about just inflicting very minor aversive conditioning like a very minor set of pain that's not going to do any long-term damage to 
conditioned to teach, basically. Here, so for a like a little kid, for like a three-year-old, a spanking equivalent would be like taking away their Legos for like a few minutes or something. That would you be don't like the equivalent. Don't get three-year-olds Legos. Yeah. Don't get three Legos. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Like spanking to me is, is when I think about it like that, like parental punishment, whether it be spanking or like a or slap punishment. on the wrist or whatever, yeah. you know, it's, like it's all like the, them. it's all part of that spectrum to me. Obviously you can't spank a kid on the head who still has like a literal soft head, oh, obviously. Smart. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, once you can crawl, you can bro. No, I'm playing. <laughs> no, no, he, here's what I'll say, right? If they don't learn early on, if they don't get that hard reinforcement, someone's going to do it to them at the and uh, when they're older yeah, exactly. and when it's way too late we got it's natural for children to keep some secrets from their parents i agree i'm gonna i'm gonna strongly agree when it comes to like nature stuff like this kind of thing it's like there's no avoiding this whether whether people even even if this is like a should question like okay should we do something to make it so that kids are gonna not have secrets like this is unavoidable look it's there's natural but do. i think the sign of a good parent natural. is that a kid is comfortable coming forward with it processing yeah. Oh, possessing marijuana for personal use should not be a criminal offense. Strongly oh. agree. Bro, this is the simplest thing. Next question. The prime function <laughs> the of schooling should be to equip the future generation to find jobs. I strongly agree. I think I But disagree. that's not what it currently does. Bro, bro, I'm going to disagree with this one. I don't Me think too. I, I don't think I don't think it's just for jobs in general. I think it should be for success. There there's a difference between jobs and success. It, we it, can get into the nuance of it, of course, but again, it's saying the prime function. So if there's still a prime if you think that's the prime function, then it's still agree. Yeah. I th I think it's the prime function of schooling is to equip you to find a job as well as prepare you with the social skills you're going to need to do so interactions with people your age yeah that's going to be a big part of it people not your age your teachers the principals the staff the lunch ladies hell everyone you meet in school is going to be something it's going to build on that ability to socially interact and a lot of people suffer not being able to do so so well because they kind of you know just aren't open to it some people are really quiet. It's natural. Those are the people who aren't going to be, they aren't going to be in social fields. They're going to study towards something else, something where they pretty much work alone, just do stuff like just programming and stuff, stuff that doesn't require communication with other people. If it was up to me, all high schools will be trade schools so that everyone, when they graduate it, they could find themselves. Bro, I don't understand why they got rid of wood shop. They got rid of that, which taught you carpentry. They got rid of fucking body shop at my school. We used to have body shop like my freshman year. You're wasting the time of the teachers who aren't really teaching you're wasting the time of the students who aren't really learning anything useful for their future and you're wasting the time of the parents who think that their kids are currently learning when they aren't only to have to teach them everything themselves later on everyone yeah. can't be a popular youtuber streamer like remember back in the day people used to ask you kids what they want to do when they got older when, like hell even our generation what did you want to do when you got older uh, astronaut probably for a lot of kids yeah yep. what were we talking about again what was the School. original thing just schools. Yeah, schools, schools, yeah. People with serious inheritable disabilities should not be allowed to reproduce. What the fuck? We can Ooh, all just... Yeah. Like, this is another one of those extreme... Anymore. This is another one of those extreme questions. They're just throwing this at it's, us. We don't have to, you know... It's just strongly disagree. Let's move on. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> no, 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 no. I go fucking, Michael. I disagree. Hold up. Hold up. Let me cook. Uh, should not reproduce versus it's a bad idea for them to reproduce. Versus should not be allowed to reproduce are like oh, three it's, it's very, very different things. It, it's, it's semantics. Oh, hold on. Oh, no, 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 no. Should, not be, should not be allowed to, should not be, it says, yeah. it says people with serious dis inheritable disabilities should not be allowed to reproduce. Okay. It the government it has, has no business, Strongly the government has no business theory. meddling in the reproductive faculties of, of their citizens. Now, uh, being a a a a China, China? <laughs> shouldn't is another, like, shouldn't yeah. is, a, is a matter of opinion, but shouldn't be allowed to implies government interference yeah. here and i don't think that Shouldn't, should be the case it's a bad idea to it's uh you know the people around them should should heavily restrict them from doing it their families and all this stuff. like there's different things there's different solutions but yeah. the government should not be meddling in in the reproductive factors of their citizens the most important thing for children is to learn what the most important thing for children to learn is to accept discipline um i agree somewhat um I think most important Okay. It's such an extreme thing to say. Most important thing for children. I think it's Maybe, important, I, I think but I don't think it's the most important thing. Most important thing for children to learn is probably like how to breathe or something, you know? <laughs> 
Like, I mean, it's that's such automatic. A... That's automatic. Hey, yo, hey, yo, I'm, 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 I'm gonna just say disagree, man. Let's just let's just keep going on. With Same, but it's like you know how many more things are in between breathing and being disciplined. It's like, <laughs> I mean, I get what they're. No, I don't go where they're trying to say. Actually, never mind. I'm gonna just go. I don't my agree gut that it's go... the most important, but I'm agree that it's important for them to learn it. Absolutely, it's because important. It's important. Accepting discipline is a large part of being an adult and growing the fuck up. It's it's a requirement. It's an absolute requirement, but man, most important, only a Sith deals in absolutes. Dang. So. <laughs> hey, only a Sith deals in absolutes is crazy. Next question. <laughs> there are no savage and civilized peoples. There are only different cultures. I agree somewhat. Oh shit. I'm going to put agree. We're all, we're all just living, man. Those who are able to work and refuse the opportunity should not expect society support. I agree. Strongly agree. agree. Strongly, 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 agree. Strongly, 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 strongly. Strongly. When you are troubled, it's better not to think about it, but to keep busy with more cheerful things. I mean, that's uh, just a personal question, man. When you're troubled, it's better not to think about it. But what do they mean, think about it? Do they mean dwell on it or do they mean address the problem? It, yeah, there's there's an element of things will keeping go on. busy with more cheerful things. And then there's an element of keeping busy with things that are distractions from actually solving your problems. Yeah. But it's, and then, and then cheer cheerful things i wouldn't even say it's ideal to distract yourself with cheerful things i would say it's ideal to distract yourself with meaningful things which are usually not always cheerful things i don't know i'm gonna go whatever you guys put no bro be independent the fuck. <laughs> okay uh all right, next question. Uh, first, wait. What did you guys put? What did you? Guys I, I just said agree, man. Like I, I, I don't, I don't give a fuck, honestly. Cool, same. First generation immigrants can never be fully integrated within their new country. Oh, this is such. I a strongly thing. disagree. Really? I strongly disagree. I, I think that if they care to put in the effort to meld into the society, because the way I think of it, melding into society and live as a normal person, I think that all immigrants have the potential to do so if they put in the work. They, they get all their, they get all their legal is taken care of when moving to this country mm -hmm. they do everything that they have to do legally the sky's the limit at that point if you want to go to somewhere that is similar to home here within the u.s Mm -hmm. You can try to find one, but it's not guaranteed that you're going to find one. So you might want to go with the next best thing. And when you do, you're going to have to put up with those differences in so in society. Because if you want the society of your home country, you're going to have to go to your home country. You can't come here expecting to change everything, but you can definitely successfully integrate into the society that is set forth already in the U.S. What's good what? for the most successful corporations is always ultimately good for all of us again a sith deals in absolutes what's most successful for corporations is always ultimately good for all of us holy <laughs> shit they put three of them in there <laughs> Oh boy, there a triple. Like, there is nothing that's like this is a Sith ultimately bad, ultimately one. good, ultimately anything. Like there is no statement you could make that's like that absolute about corporations. Bro, I'm people. just gonna go strongly disagree. Just skip it. Bro. Yeah, same, same. Yeah, yeah. No, th that, this is a Sith deal. Let's not sign that. <laughs> no <laughs> broadcasting institution, however independent, its contact should receive public funding. I agree, bro. That's just strongly propaganda, agree. bro. <laughs> broadcasting institution. Okay, I assume. I can kind of guess what they're talking about. So, yeah. Our civil liberties are being excessively curbed in the name of counterterrorism. Honestly, I agree with I this. agree. Yeah. I agree. All right. There we go. A significant a advantage of a one-party state is that it avoids all the arguments that delay progress in a democratic political system. Technically, I, that's 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 kind of how things work. That is how it works, but that's not uh, an advantage in, like, the purest sense of the word advantage. I don't know. Yeah, I think that's a disadvantage personally because it does avoid those arguments, but the arguments are what bring up the main concerns that could stop something from not working as intended. The continuum so, of change is driven by the war of opposites. Although the, although electronic, the electronic age, age makes official surveillance easier, only wrongdoers need to be worried. Strongly disagree. I strongly man. disagree. Strongly disagree. Wait, this, is, this is pretty privacy, much the bro. same thing as the first question about the civil liberties. Oh, I, it relates. It relates for sure. But it's not the same thing. Um, the death penalty actually, should be an option for the most serious crimes. I I agree. I think there's I some people. Agree. I, I think there's some people that are strays. Yeah, yeah. They need to be sent like, back to God. Okay. Okay. You want you want yeah. to know why this actually has a little bit of relevance right now? The mastermind behind like the 9/11 bombings and, and like the, the the people who put the together the plans. 
it's been like 11 years or something since they've been in Guantanamo Bay. Now they're petitioning for not parole, but basically to eliminate the death sentence, at least on them. And then it, it, it was like a Exhibit whole... A. <laughs> Exhibit A. But also, like, it's like a whole thing where it's like... On one hand, I, un- I understand, like, 11 years of Guantanamo Bay. Like, we, we still have no idea what the fuck goes on in there. That's like a black side that they could have seen the worst shit of the worst shit. But on the other hand, it's like all of that pain and suffering that they've inflicted. It's like, you kind of have to let it Do they end. really deserve a pass on it? <laughs> I wouldn't say they deserve a pass, but, like, I have no idea what they experienced, right? The corruption of, of like, the cruelty of prisons is, like, a different discussion entirely. And if anything, for a lot of people, the death sentence is a way out. Like, there have been instances, actually, if I remember correctly, this may be a complete fucking lie. This may be, like, (laughs) something I just made up in my head. But I I remember when I was, like, younger, like, when I was, like, 13, 14, hearing about these people who, like, they wouldn't get the death penalty, and they would get life in prison, and they would say, like, please give me the death penalty. I want to go out peacefully. I don't want to live like this. I don't want to stay like trapped in here, like in this like cage, prisoner for life, or like get shanked one day. You know, like yeah. I want to just go out with like a injection or whatever. And it's like it feels like it shouldn't be as inhumane as people make it out to be compared to like Spending some the tortures of, of real life. Yeah. yeah. And if if people like the terrorists behind 9/11 are petitioning to have their lives saved, then clearly their situations are not so bad to the fact to the point where they where they crave an out. You know, I think there's there's definitely room in society for people to be sent back because there's always the whole idea of like the punishment should fit the crime type thing. I think there's certain standards we have to adhere to as a society as to what can be rehabbed within prison because remember the idea of prison is to rehabilitate people for entrance back into society even though it fails to do so in the slightest ways. It's the idea, at least. But <laughs> it's the idea. It's the thought least. that counts. In a civilized society, one must always have people above to be obeyed and be- people below to be commanded. I mean, that's I how society disagree. works in general. Like, there's a hierarchy to everything. I strongly disagree. Yeah, if we're talking about like one must always. Uh, yeah, no, I strongly disagree. There are societies where there's no leader. Like, there's people, the fucking Amish. There's no leader in the Amish. They have a pastor, but he's not a leader. He's just another member of the community. And they yeah, also, I mean, I mean, they have like a council. I'm guessing, right? At one point. Yeah, they have like a council, but it's comprised of the common men and women there. And also, there's when you look at like really, really smaller, small societies, mm-hmm. societies that are close sort of Dunbar's number groups of 150 and whatnot and even like to really small degree like just families the people that are above in the hierarchy are not the ones like who demand that they be obeyed right. they are the ones that are being commanded basically they are the ones that are if you want to extrapolate this out to like a really really large extent to like governments or whatever to like societies like civilizations then it would be like i had this thought too which is artists are not meant to be like the top tippity top of society artists are like compulsive obsessive people who have some innate desire to do something that mm-hmm. deviates heavily from what society is already doing and the rest of society gets to reap the rewards basically controlling their actions with their wallets essentially and, and from like a family perspective the people that are natural setting with like small families families close families with like strong family values the people that are the ones that are like commanded to like okay you got to get this done you got to do this for the family you got to do this are the ones that are at the top they're not the ones that are like forcing the rest of the family to obey they're obeying the commands of the family citizens shouldn't be serving the government the government should be serving its citizens abstract art that doesn't represent anything shouldn't be considered art at all strongly disagree Man just really went on. <laughs> hey, I, that's that's this is the kind of thing that I'm I'm into. I'm more into art than I am into politics or drama or anything. So I'm gonna just go all out with this. I already know. Agree because at some point, uh, fucking abstract art actually doesn't mean anything. But I do think that there's meanings to be derived from certain representations of certain things. Yeah, yeah. I think that you can look whole, past the surface on certain stuff. There's a lot of abstract art, and not even. There's a lot of art in general that's just bullshit. But to define art in as a word is a is a foolish task. It's a never ending journey. Yep. Eventually, you reach the point where you're like, "What's even the point of defining it?" Like art is a you know it when you see it type of thing. Yep. In criminal justice, punishment should be more important than rehabilitation. I strongly disagree. Yeah, we just talked about that. We just did this. It is a waste of time to try to rehabilitate some criminals. Same. <laughs> 
the business person and the manufacturer are more important than the writer and the artist. Yes. I agree. I agree. I think, I think that th artists have their importance. There is a place in society for the writer and the artist for sure. But that place in society is is on the fringes. A lot of times when they're true artists will give up their will give up their entire lives for the sake of their art. The people that the rest of society, the 80%, 95%, whatever, you know, percent is there to sort of rebalance things and keep like a, a risk averse mentality and not do all this like crazy arbitrary shit that makes no sense. Even when they become complex enough to convince the whole rest of the world that they're just like them, that they look like them, they act like them, that they are just as complex of a human as they are. They're still deep drawn to their proclivities as artists and they'll give up their lives for their art this is what artists are for artists the way i look at it is like if you want to look at the world as and this is totally optional for anyone who wants to look at the world this way but it could have some utility as like god controlling the events and controlling the pace of where like humanity goes to keeping people in line basically it's like god trying to find what's best for humanity and then artists are god taking a few of the humans and then throwing them at the wall and seeing what sticks to go like, oh, a bunch of these artists are all starving artists. They all failed. They all try to do some random arbitrary thing, like just paint a whole bunch of blue everywhere, like Zima blue. And for them, it didn't work out. For most of them, it doesn't work out. So clearly, that's not the direction that we should be slightly shifting society into. We're going to make this all these artists like very extreme, very obsessive over what they do. One of them ends up making something that really works out, that that pushes the boundaries. And all like the great innovations of the world have all been done by artists, even like look at the scientists that have created the greatest inventions in science they were all obsessed with the art of science when one of them does something that works out like on the fringes then society slightly shifts their collective paradigm in that direction and that's like the purpose of artists in society if you will be it's like a way to look at it it's a way to look at it but generally like the servant in society i view as like the artist and because of everyone's quality of life today i guess we're all where everyone is kings and queens and it's now the the minority that's the servants all right so Fair do you point. agree or disagree <laughs> i mean i agree i agree i agree okay. business the business person the manufacturer are more important than the writer and the artist i, I like how you <laughs> said that we should like start going through these fast and then you went on a whole like tirade oh man I <laughs> nah, when you get passionate yeah. it's good though. no no yeah, yeah. it's good all content the... i'm just saying i'm just saying <laughs> all the art ones i might have to go off on but yeah <laughs> mothers may have mothers. careers but their first duty is to be homemakers strongly agree. sounds pretty um Besides Misogynistic. Misogynistic. Hey, then I guess I'm a misogynist. So am I. Let's go. Multinational companies are unethically exploiting the planet's genetic resources of developing countries. Plant. Wait, wait, the hold plant on. Plant genetic resources. What do they mean by I plant? Mean that they're talking about the stuff that naturally yeah, comes yeah, in there, like, kind of like French like, the uranium over in Africa right now, or or like the cobalt in like South Korea, uh, yeah. or whatever other places. Congo, Congo, Congo. Yeah, like there's yeah. not much to discuss here. Making peace with the establishment is an important aspect of maturity. I mean, uh, yeah. Um, I'm going to disagree. Why so? It's part of the driving factor in the character arc of life to not really ever disagree with whatever the status quo is, whatever it may be, always pushing for, for, for more, pushing for to repaint the world around you in your own image as right. like scary and as like uh, dark as that might sound. I think maturity is making peace with yourself, your own mind, your own body, your own soul, and also the people around you, people you're allegiant to, you know? People that you truly have empathy for and that you respect and love. But I don't think making peace with the establishment is a part of maturity. Maybe, I mean, at maybe one it point, is. At one point or another, when you reach a certain point, you do come to the... I wouldn't say realization, but you come to learn your place in the world. Like, you, you find your calling, so, so to speak, right? Right. And I think maybe this might just be for me, and maybe I'm not mature enough yet, but if I think about like what my calling is mm -hmm. it's to not be at peace with the establishment oh we got a little anarchist a little rebellion boy over here <laughs> I, I mean I, i'm just gonna agree michael oh, you cool. got anything i'm gonna do, i'm gonna disagree right. I gotta disagree strongly disagree <laughs> strongly yeah, yeah we can go past that right. astrology accurately explains many you know in case someone's listening through audio astrology mm -hmm. accurately explains many things strongly disagree you cannot be moral without being religious strongly disagree yeah i'm just gonna put disagree charity is better than social security as a means of helping the genuinely disadvantaged honestly 
Honestly? I yeah, I agree. I agree. I don't think it's the best method, but it is yeah. a better method than social security. Some people are naturally unlucky. Strongly agree. Like what the fuck? I'm going to strongly agree. Strongly agree. The Some RNG of life. Sometimes. It is important that my child's school instills religious values. Strongly disagree. I mean, it really strongly depends on what you mean. By, okay, okay. But I think it also right, kind right. of- Again, what, it depends on what you mean by religious values. But I think what they're trying to say is like indoctrination in a specific kind of religion. All right, last page, boys. Ooh, let me get this one, Wilson. All right. Let me I mean, hey, I'm not going to right you. here. Finally, a look at sex. Sex outside of marriage is usually immoral. Maybe. I don't think that sex outside of marriage is immoral. I think that meaningless, meaningless sex is immoral. I'm not going to strongly disagree, but I'm going to disagree. A same-sex yeah. couple in a stable, loving relationship should not be excluded from the possibility of child adoption. I think we can all agree on this. I think I agree regularly. I, don't I agree regularly. Agree. I don't strongly agree either. Pornography, Pornography depicting, depicting consen consenting adults should be legal for the adult population. Oh my god, this is another fucking uh, thing. Okay. I'm I gonna, agree. All right, I'm no. gonna, Here's the thing. When it comes to, like, the legalities of this stuff, it's like what I was saying earlier. For me, like, all of this stuff is... I'm glad there's a whole page dedicated towards it because, like, this is such a deeply integral part of society. It's, like, the discussion. It's, like, the deepest discussion to talk about. Like, the currently. core discussion. Yeah, 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 currently, yeah. But I don't think, when it comes to legalities, when it comes to, like, government interference, I don't think that government should be interfering with, like, almost everything that involves reproduction or its communicative auxiliaries. I don't know the words, but you know what I'm saying. I don't think... Like when it comes to if it's wrong what's or whatever, going on in a bedroom is the, is business of the state. Just like yeah. the next question, what okay. goes on in a private I, I bedroom? I would just like to say this. Adults. Right? I, I would just like to say this, right? When it comes to pornography, I think we can all agree that it's not the best thing. Yeah, right? I'm sure we can all agree that it's a lot worse than not the best thing. Yeah, but, yeah. But, and and, yeah. and here's it, the thing: it's effectively bad. It's it's genuinely bad for society, but. It is a personal choice to participate in and or purchase pornography. Yeah. At which point it's up to the individual. Yeah. I don't think, I think that it should be illegal. illegal. I don't think that it should be. I don't think the state has any business in it. Hell, I don't think that the state should have any business getting in the way of prostitution either. But that's a different argument. It's a, it's a similar argument. It's a similar argument. Similar argument. Porn is just prostitution, but with a camera. <laughs> Yeah. What goes on in a private bedroom between consenting adults is no business of the state, which I strongly agree with. And I'm pretty sure you guys do, too. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I don't care Ooh, if this on. guy wants hold to. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. No, 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 no. Michael, we're, we're, we're kind of going into a slippery slope here. If it's between okay. if it's between two consenting adults, I still think there must be some limit to it. Now, whether that be whether that be part of the state, I don't know. But. I think there's got to be some limit to some shit, man. As long as it doesn't violate any pre-existing laws, I think it's fine. Everyone always wants to talk about my body, my choice, and except for when it comes to assisted suicide. I don't think they're talking about assisted suicide. <laughs> I don't think they're talking about that. Yeah, I think this page yeah. is strictly yeah. about sex. And okay, 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 but here's the thing. Here, here's the thing. We all know that porn has some really crazy shit. But like at one point or another, like don't you think that even even if it's consenting that it has like psychological impacts on someone and, and like don't you want like, um, the well being of certain people to be looked after, especially when they're like because right, it can right, right. It, it can be exactly. easily taken advantage of, right? Right. I want the yeah. well being of people to look after. I, ideally, I would not want porn to exist in general. I don't want people to even go through the psychological. It's hard to even say damage the psychological understanding that they're even contributing to that kind of thing. But I don't think it's the responsibility of the government to ensure that people are not yeah 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 I, I think people should not be watching porn i think it's a bad thing i don't think it's the government's job to remove that bad thing yeah i look at it as the same sort of thing as like the government has no place telling people what they can and cannot believe in like religious stuff because yeah. pornography is also deeply connected with, I mean, sex in general is deeply connected with like religious ideas and stuff. But it's like, you could look at pornography as like a metaphorical temptation from the devil, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, I don't think the government has any business in, in that or what goes on in the private bedroom between consen consenting adults. There might be a slippery slope there, but I think for this page, I'm willing to go down that slope. Yeah, no one can feel naturally homosexual. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to. 
going to disagree. I'm going to disagree. I'm not going to strongly disagree. Just a regular disagree. disagreement. Just a regular disagree. Wilson, you there? I think oh, he's you're there. muted. We can move on. Um, right. la- we're on the last question. These um, days, openness about sex has gone too far. I agree. I strongly agree. We should not have pride parades where people are walking down the yeah. street ass yeah. and cheek naked in bondage gear. The reason why I don't say strongly agree is because you can look at openness in more than one way. Because in a sense, there is a lot of depth and nuance to the um the role that sex has in people's lives and in our stories and in society that isn't being talked about and isn't even and is being like removed from youtube and shit like that i think people should be more open with that kind of stuff but people are too open with their actions and not very open with like the communication aspect of it so i'm, I'm not gonna put strongly agree but i'm gonna put agree yo wilson well if, cool, cool yeah cool. we just finished up on the test it's time to see where we stand wait wait wilson what do you think about the last the last two questions let me think last two okay. or three or three whichever no, ones no one can feel naturally homosexual honestly disagree and in mm. these days openness about sex has gone too far strongly agree the, the natural thing with homosexual is an argument of nature versus nurture and maybe that i can bring some some science into it too but on a different day <laughs> on a different day um, i'd love to talk about the nature versus nurture thing so y'all ready to see your results let's see where you stand all You're right libertarian right ish i'm libertarian right as well <laughs> Yeah, Sam, I got libertarian right. I got <laughs> let's let's compare the exact position of our dots. I'm gonna send a screenshot real quick. I mean you can you can and tell then I know the there's top. a chart somewhere for like what each category is that I'm gonna have to find for us. I'll put it in the gen chat, boys. Yeah, That's I mean where hey, I we, we took it. <laughs> That's where I am. Not not far off. How far off is ours from, from yours? Dude. Oh, you're super close to the center. Who me? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, here's the thing. I can always see like every side of an argument, so that's why I feel like I'm up there, you know? Yeah, fence sitter. <laughs> yeah, you were telling me to not fence it. So much for me doing that. Hey, I mean, hey. I was the furthest yeah. away. Yeah. <laughs> we know who the real fence sitter is now. <laughs> nah, it's, it's all right. Hi. So we're definitely not authoritarians, right, boys? If somebody yeah. asks me what I got, if I do the political compass test, I'm going to say authoritarian left. Let me let me take a look because there's a breakdown of these. I'm going to send the breakdown in the chat so we can all see what category we technically fall into. For, for those of you guys who are watching the stream, Michael got like super libertarian right-ish. And then Frog got even more. And then I'm like all the way towards the center because I'm a centrist, apparently. <laughs> and I'm the extremist of the group. Every group's got their extremist. I mean, I guess Clearly. so. Clearly. But it never so. took you for a, for a libertarian <laughs> extremist. But <laughs> when I was younger, I used to be way more like liberal. I used to be like, because I was, all I saw was like what, what people said around me. So I was all like Democrat, progressive, all that stuff, right? Yeah. And then it turned into, instead of there being a split between, two kinds of of people which is what seems like happened where it's like instead of there being a spectrum and there being reasonable people all across the board it seems like people have split into this like one side is on this side and the other side is on the other side and there's nobody in the middle yeah. i think what really happened is people split into two where it's it's not even a split it's also a spectrum of authenticity versus inauthenticity and i i think authentically like my natural my natural self i lean a lot more left like when i was a kid i would lean a lot more left than the majority of people around me well to be fair there there is that old thing where it's like when you're younger you're a little bit more liberal and then when you grow older you become more conservative or whatever yeah thing but is. even compared to the kids around me but i, I think part of the reason why that that quote might even exist is because and this gets conspiratorial but i feel like people have been brainwashed mm-hmm. to go like outside the spectrum entirely from not only like to the left like they've gone beyond what like being a leftist extremist was into like way outside the fringes and now it's a trendy thing it's a trendy thing to do that and to be that and so all the people that don't think for themselves all people that are inauthentic the npcs they're all like extreme extreme one way or the other but I see primarily on the internet, on usually on the left, like way beyond me. So when I talk to these people, they're like, oh, you're very conservative with your 
opinion on like abortion or whatever. And I'm like, dude, if you were not following these trends, I would be way more liberal than you. This right here, I'm about to send a graphic for you guys. This is the area in which most American politics fall. Wait, 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 wait. Let's try to, let, let's, me and Michael, or uh, Darren. Uh, Darren, try to guess where it's going to be on the, on the compass. Oh, go for it. Go <sighs> for it. Bro. Which, which quadrant do you think it's going to be? On like what? Most politicians or just like, is it most people? Most American politics discussions fall into these categories. Oh. Most people in America basically would associate the most with these. Okay, uh, I think it'll be just judging from the type of people who would probably be more likely to take the political compass test. I think it'll probably be more on the left. Just get like, I could be totally wrong. I think it'll be more on the left and I think it'll be more on the bottom maybe you see most american politics in general fall into this bubble really? this is about where american politics fall really oh yeah. that's completely off where i was putting it huh. that's super they interesting really that's here. the line that's literally the picket fence all oh these. my god all these labels dude holy shit you know, these are where americans fall interesting and I think that just goes to show how far removed they are from what we actually want but also yeah. if you look at this you see a, a few that fall off the compass um those are the fucking out of your fucking mind ones yeah the the ones that are outside of the perfect square the ones that kind of add like weird shapes to the edges those are the fucking weird ones craterocracy yeah that i'm pretty sure that one is whoever's the biggest and the strongest rules and then genghis khanism which is like if i can conquer i i should conquer this has got to be the guy who made this is probably like laughing writing some of these names <laughs> yeah because on uh, fucking fordism that's a literal cartoon villainism even even through the course of this we, we clearly saw that like if we had the time to think about things our our perspective on things matters our our opinions change and so don't immediately stake with your gut reaction you know, that, that, that's that's the main thing I would say. If someone's disagreeing with you or if you're having a conversation and you don't truly believe in something, at least think about the other side rather than just saying like putting your fingers in your ears and just like screaming over it. You know, look at the other side for more than the briefest glimpse, because more more likely than not, there are things that everyone can agree on. We're led to believe that there is no such thing as like compromise or decency or, or like common sense. I got one more thing. and I feel like we should probably be responsible and say this just because you fall in certain sectors of the map doesn't mean that that's truly all that you believe this is just a consensus type question built on specific points specific arguments you may have completely different opinions as to what this test means so if you guys do decide to take the test at home or do it among like a group of friends oh, yeah of course. don't get too pissed off at each yeah, other for some yeah, weird too. places they literally like, said the questions are meant to be vague like they're they're not made with any bro, they're made yeah, to accommodate ever, everyone saw us not, take yeah. this we went way too much into it yeah these questions are made to accommodate like like kids who want to take the test like it's made for everyone you know people should not get so emotionally attached they should not a put label. themselves in a box because of the label that they're given based off of their based off what they did in some test or whatever it doesn't help you or anyone else around you to to even think of yourself as so simple that you could be described with such simple labels exactly wrap this up good stream good stream boys um it's who, a wrap. who wants to go to burger king later